I've always known Kraus to be one of a kind. He's a very straightforward person, very hyper-focused, and his, his love for winning is infectious. James has really put together an amazing program here. Yeah, man, like I love my life. I wake up, I hang out, I get to go to work and see my best friends. Like I show up early just so I can bullshit and have fun with my, my, my guys, you know? And I mean, we just fuck around, we just do what I love all day. Like, I mean, this is, ah, I don't know how I got so lucky, man. I mean, I do, it was a lot of fucking hard work and a lot of, a lot of hard life to go along with it. However, man, this is really great. And yeah, uh, I don't know, man, we just all really love our jobs. That, that culture, we just all really care. We all have uh, a goal that we're working towards together. And I mean, it's, it's great. Uh, I started working for a guy named Brian Davidson who opened, uh, at the time, was called Grindhouse. So the first time I ever came to Glory, it was actually another gym. It was over um, a little, about a mile away from here that's called Grindhouse. K-12 Grindhouse was here. Then it switched over to a building just down the road, like literally a quarter of a mile down the road, and they switched from K-12 Grindhouse to Glory. That's when James took over. To open that up, and uh, it was the first real like MMA dedicated gym in Kansas City, and I think that would have been in like 2011, 2012. Many, many years ago, we all used to train. Um, I just saw the, the fighters getting taken advantage of from the promotions. I ended up buying the gym in 2013, uh, shortly after my UFC debut. I changed the name to Glory. So one day I just told James and a couple of the other guys, like, hey, have these guys call me. We'll work out a fair deal and, and go from there. And then around that time, I feel like all the, all the places in Kansas City, we started to put together a really good team and everybody's kind of gravitated towards us. My friend Trey Ogden, um, who also owns Glory uh, OP, a different location, but also the Glory Banner, uh, brought me in and had me uh, come in and train with him on a Saturday. And Saturdays back, back then were notorious for being tough. 10 rounds, uh, sometimes 15. They would do five uh, jujitsu rounds and then they would do five MMA rounds and then five kickboxing rounds. And so not being somebody who trained MMA, jumping right into that, that the best gym in the city. Uh, it, it was really intimidating, especially back then. I remember you used to get nauseous just even going to sparring rounds. Not very many gyms do you see that are so diehard team glory. Not diehard team glory because like, we have a name to uphold. It was always inviting to come to Glory, and so, but it was also intimidating at the same time. But it's more so we have like a family to uphold, and we have to. When our family goes out to battle, we want to make sure, like, hey man, you're, you're, ch everything's good. Like I made sure that you're this, this, and that. Half these guys, more than half, have known me since before I was driving, so they've seen all like the big moments in my yeah. life, like all the crazy stuff from little high school breakups to like. I don't know, just family events, whatever, they've been through it all with me. Most of them were at my graduation party. It's completely a family. We're constantly working with each other, constantly like trying to make each other better. It's not just the coaches that are spreading knowledge, and I think that's what's so special about it is because a lot of times it's just the coaches that spread knowledge, but James has made a system to where he teaches so much that it's able to be trickled down through his all of his little ninjas. I saw the movie Three Little Ninjas when I was a kid, and that was like my genesis. Started karate kicking everything, running around, you know, ninja flipping and whatnot. Had a little gang in kindergarten with my friends where we were the Three Little Ninjas. We used to run around fighting people. We didn't really have enough money to do like uh, martial arts or anything like that, so it was kind of just kind of a dream for me. I've seen it from whenever we started kind of small, kind of like a no-name gym to like where we are now. Like as you can see, we've attracted quite a bit of top talent. We've actually had a lot of homegrown fighters who've started as an amateur. And as you can see now, they're in the UFC. I think James will be the first to tell you it's it's not all his doing. We have a great staff here from the front desk guy to, to the assistant coaches. It's just an accumulation of everybody doing their part. So I came on board to Glory probably four years ago and was a part of like part of the Glory team. The fitness side was uh, also added into Glory at that time. And so I was running a gym um, here at Glory, just in the space uh, in the room back there. 
and uh, is also am also fighting and teaching martial arts classes. I teach the kickboxing classes here as well. Um, and now actually it's its own separate business and I rent the space out from them. Um, so still a part of the team, it's just no longer under the glory banner, it's its own separate thing. It's been great to see that. I think it's just the culture that we've created and then obviously the world-class training and instructors that we have. We're getting these guys high level fights at an amateur level and so they're comfortable at the beginning, you know, the beginning pro stage or fighting in front of Dana White. They're, they're used to the cameras. All the, all the hard work leading up for their amateur fight to their beginning pro fight is just setting the stage and getting them ready for the UFC. Um, everybody here is to, you know, they, they want to help each other out. They want to see each other succeed. So I feel like that's pretty cool. You know, there's no, hey, I'm better than you, so I'm not going to help you or anything like that. So um, that's been pretty cool. And I think that's what's really fostered growth. And that's why you see such like a, a rise in stock of the gym. Um, you know, and like I said, like James really puts a lot of just time and effort into his fighters, no matter who they are. So that's been great. As you can tell, like they really look up to him. They, you know, they hold him in high regard. And at the same time, too, like they, they trust him with everything. It's hard to trust somebody with your life and your career, but I 100% put every, all my faith into James. He's the shit. <laughs> MMA is my religion, like saved my life. Uh, I know James mentioned it before, a lot of fighters have a hard come up, you know? And, like, we don't gotta get into that, but yeah, you know, uh, I can identify with that and I have no question in my mind if I hadn't found uh, the sport, I would for sure be in prison, if not dead. Uh, it saved my life, I love it. Like, uh, like I said, man, I get to wake up every day and get to hang out with my friends and do what I love. So yeah, man, like I, I am bought into James. James is my preacher, it's my religion, you know, like I'm bought into, bought into it. So I wanna, wanna preach his good word, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. James has made a huge impact um, and probably in like a way that like I didn't even realize until I started maturing. And then I immersed myself into the gym and I was never really one for structure. I didn't ever follow structure. I was not defiant in like an aggressive outbursty way, but like when someone tells me to do something, my initial reaction is to be like, no, probably not. I'll probably do the complete opposite whether I want to or not. And being within glory, James is very like clear. It's, hey, what I say is what I'm saying. If you want to argue it, either don't take my help or get out. Trust me, trust what I'm saying. And it's easy to trust him because everything he's telling us to do, he does. We can see it in his fights, we see it in the gym. Kraus has elevated my mentality, elevated my game, elevated my awareness, elevated my jujitsu, elevated my striking, elevated my MMA IQ all around. A lot of the fighters are like, man, like James is, you know, coach of the year, like he's you know, he's helped me out through this. He's improved my games. When it comes to fighting, he's on a whole nother level. He's one of the best coaches in the world. His technical understanding, what he's able to do on the mats, um, from building up people who've never fought before, all the way into people who are, you know, competing for a world championship. So I feel like a lot of people, they hear that. And they're like, man, like, I need to see what's going on there at Glory and Lee Summit, kind of see, you know, what they're doing. And, you know, I want to get on that train. You know what I mean? So I think that's why you see that. and. It's just been, like I said, the culture that's been created and then just like the environment and, you know, there's a lot of energy in practice, you know, everybody's helping each other out, you know, you know, there's some competitive rounds in here for sure, but after that everyone's hugging each other and then they're on to the next. So, you know, and I think everybody holds each other accountable as well, so that's a big deal too, so. We have a culture here that is just, it's like nothing else at all to where you have no option but to listen to him kind of thing. And it's not in a like controlling way. It's, you just know that that's what you need to do. That's how you're going to win. The culture that James creates, and not just James, but the, you know, the whole coaching staff, uh, they created is that you come in here, you put in the work, you know, and you put in the time. And then if you listen to them and you follow the path, you know, it's a high percentage from the rest of our fighters that you're going to be successful. And so I just think I see more UFC fighters, and I think we're going to have some guys compete for, you know, world championship, championships and titles. And I think uh, we'll end up being one of the top gyms in the world and probably have the most, if you know, some of the most, if not the most, UFC fighters in-house. Um, and the cool thing is a lot of our guys are homegrown. You know, they're not people who are transplants. We have a lot of guys who are coming in here now, but that's been as of late. You know, there's a lot of men and women who were raised in these gyms who are now growing up through those ranks, and we got more coming too. It's not just, it's not just the guys in there. I like 
this small town blue collar culture. I really do. I don't want to be a super gym because I feel like people get lost in that. And uh, I would rather have. We're we're already getting to a point where it's like, holy shit! Like we got to. Like I'm in search of two new coaches right now, and uh, it's a lot. It's a lot, and I don't mind it being a lot. But I just want to make sure that we don't lose what got us here, and that is the care, the attention, the culture in which I just talked about. Uh, I want to make sure that we don't lose that along the way because that's really important to me. You know, I've known him forever, you know, and he's actually one of my best friends and, and to see how much he's evolved. And as you can tell, just his success and that immediately impacts the gym, as you can see. So he's very motivated. He's very determined to get where he wants to be. He cares again about all of his fighters' careers, you know, because that's his name on them, you know. So it's just, it's been huge. And they, obviously, everybody looks up to him. And, you know, he's the general. He's, he's leading the entire army. So, um, and you know, we wouldn't have it any other way.